All right, guys, welcome back. This is Mr. Carl. I'm going to be talking about super volcanoes. Look at that slide. When we're starting with stuff like that today, that can't be good. Is a super volcano something that we really need to be worried about? Oh, yeah, we do. Okay, because we've had these eruptions happen before from as far back as over 2 million years ago to as recent as 70,000 years ago. And take a look at that caption. We believe that there's going to be such an eruption by the end of the year. Yeah, this is something that we need to worry about. Now, take a look at this overview. This is the Yellowstone Park area, and it's going to show the result of a recent uh, supervolcano explosion that they had over there. The interior over there is the caldera, or it's going to be the crater from where the eruption itself actually happened. You go down a little bit from there, you're going to see a smaller caldera. But to get an idea of the scale, look in the top right-hand corner. You see you've got cars, trucks, buses. That will give you an idea of the massive size. It's going to take out a radius of mountains 50 miles why? It's just going to collapse the mountains into the caldera. That's how bad it was. It's going to cover areas across Idaho, Montana, and Wyoming. This is going to show us the extent of the volcanic ash that was spewed across from there. As we go across, you notice the colors are changing. But nonetheless, we're going to see volcanic ash from that eruption that's going to be in the Pacific Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean, even down to the Gulf of Mexico. This is going to show up as being a super volcano, giving a rating of eight on the Volcanic Explosivity Index, or the VER, just like you've got Hurricanes on a scale of 1 to 5, earthquakes 1 to 12 on the Richter. This is going to be 0 to 8 on the VER. The blue is going to be where the actual eruption of the supervolcano was in Yellowstone. And then from there, it's going to get thinner and thinner and thinner as we get out. But the point is, the fact that that volcanic ash goes all the way across the United States, that shows us how incredibly intense that volcanic eruption was. The eruption is going to trigger all sorts of major issues associated with it. When volcanic ash spews from a crater like that, it's going to kill anybody in that immediate area as you're inhaling hot volcanic ash. Cool volcanic ash is going to be just as dangerous, but it's going to take a much greater amount of time to do danger, creating respiratory issues and various types of cancer. We know that as a result of looking at the survivors of the 9-11 attacks in New York City, killed 3,000 that day, but over the next decade, it's going to kill thousands and thousands more because they inhale that ash associated with the actual explosion of the planes itself. Now let's take a look at a more recent supervolcano. Not quite a supervolcano. That was only a six on the VEI scale. Look over here. The map on the right is going to be Europe. That's going to show you the decrease in temperatures that we're going to have in Europe. Here's, here's planet Earth. Here's Europe. Here's the other side of the world where Mount Tambor erupts. And nonetheless, it's still going to show significant cooling of temperature in Europe over there. The eruption itself, that day 10,000 people died, 80,000 are going to die from starvation and disease associated with the global cooling that went with the eruption of Mount Tambor. What happens is that was a stratovolcano. It throws the volcanic ash into the Earth's atmosphere, gets picked up by the planetary winds. They're going to circulate the volcanic ash, and what's going to happen is the sunlight coming from the sun is going to hit the volcanic ash. It's going to be reflected out. And as a result of that, the temperature of planet Earth will decrease significantly, causing crop failure, causing starvation, and actually causing political upheavals in the beginning part of the 20th century. Some climatologists say that the temperature went down by as much as five and a half degrees. I think that's a bit of a stretch, but nonetheless, there was a significant decrease in temperature, so much so that 1815, 16, 17, and even as late as 1818 were called the years without summer. Now let's take something a little bit more recent in 2010. This is a volcanic eruption in Iceland. That eruption is going to spew a lot of planetary, uh, sorry, a lot of volcanic ash into the atmosphere, but it's not going to get winds. And what it's going to do is it's going to spread out all across Europe, Asia, and North America. 
So much so that they had to stop plane travel for about a month and a half after that. And that was only a 2.1 on that scale. Now imagine what it must be like with an eight. This will give you a better idea, folks, okay? The little area over there in the middle to be Pinatubo. That would also significantly drop the temperature of planet Earth. That was in 1991. Now, as you radiate out, the, uh, the uh, second and third outermost ones are going to be super volcanoes. Both of them are going to register an eight on that scale. This just gives you an idea of the actual mass of the whole entire thing. A super volcano happens over what we call a hot spot. Okay, a hot spot. What that means is you're going to take chambers of magma and the magma chambers are going to fill up because they're over a hot spot and it's just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and it's going to get thicker and thicker and thicker. Eventually what's going to happen is it's going to be like a bottle of warm soda. Take a bottle of warm soda, you shake it up, man the gas inside just wants to erupt but it can't do anything because it's got a cap on the top. Unscrew the cap, bam, it's all going to come flying out. That's exactly what a super volcano does. You've got tremendous amounts of stored energy in those chambers, but so long as those chambers remain capped, just like that bottle, nothing's going to happen. But when you've got those earthquake swarms around it, they're going to weaken the bedrock and eventually the rock itself is going to split. Bam! There's going to be that super volcano. All that stored energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy. And that's what you're seeing over here right there, folks, okay? Now, you've got hot spots in places like Iceland and Hawaii, the Canary Islands, the Galapagos Islands, but those areas over there are, are going to be most noted for a slow release of energy. The one that you've got over there at Yellowstone, that's just like that bottle of soda waiting to erupt. Let's put it all in its proper perspective. That prediction that we started the lesson with, that was made in 2018. We're in 2020. It never happened. How did they cover themselves? They said, well, if it doesn't happen this year, it's going to happen sometime within the next 400,000 years. Give me a break already. You see, the term supervolcano is a legitimate term that's used by the United States Geologic Services, but the media clenches onto the term supervolcano, and they're going to make it a whole lot more than it really is. We believe, or geologists believe, that something like this is likely to happen once every 100,000 years. The last one happened 70,000 years ago. So you know what? We're still 30,000 years to the good. The bottom line is, let's not get ourselves worked up over it. Hakuna Matata, guys. Don't worry about this. You want to learn more about it? You know the drill. Go to the library website. My classes, I've got two of them dealing with earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis. Oh my! And we've also got another one dealing with planet Earth and the lithosphere. All of that explains how these volcanoes come about. Don't let the media scare you guys. We're out of here.